Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Seem Lund and this is my wife Inka. And uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the three habits that can promote longevity and uh, lifespan. This is part two. Part one we did on Inka's channel. So if you want to learn about the other three habits that can increase your longevity, then uh, check out that video on Inka's channel in the description. Do it. So technically habit number four or habit number one in this video is going to be uh, walking. So uh, walking is, I think, one of the most underrated forms of uh, exercise or movement. It's not deliberate like exercise, but it definitely has a lot of very similar benefits to your health and longevity like exercise does. And obviously, you know, main mechanism has to do with just better like uh, cardiovascular disease risk factors, better blood sugar regulation, better blood pressure. So there's many things that you can achieve with just regular walking. And one 2020 uh, study did show that the lowest risk of uh, mortality was among people who walked around 10 to 12 to even 14,000 steps a day. And uh, people who walk less than 8,000 steps a day, they have a significantly higher risk of mortality. And people who walk more than that, like 16, 20,000 steps, they, didn't, they don't see like any additional reduction in mortality. So I think for most people, they're going to have good aim to uh, get for, day, for the entire day is going to be around like 12,000 steps a day or something like that. There was even one study, I don't remember the specifics, so I'm like, uh, we need to check that, but there was actually this like uh, inverse curve at some point in young young people, if I recall correctly. So like after 16,000 step, it started to be associated with mm. like more, or still less, you know, co uh, uh, risk for mortality, but it wasn't that high anymore mm. as w in 10,000 steps, for example. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Like, I think you can even get away with slightly less, like maybe eight to 10,000 is already mm. good enough if you do like some other form of exercise. The like more intense exercise you do, then the less actual steps you need to take. Mm. So if you don't do any exercise at all, then the best step count is going to be like 12,000. Uh, but if you, let's say, lift weights or something on that day, then you can get away with maybe 8,000. But yeah, even on the days that you do exercise a lot, I think it's still good to aim for at least, you know, eight to 10. And uh, if you really want to <laughs> optimize it, then 12,000 steps. Go! All right, habit number two is going to be regular sauna use. And uh, this is something that we've already talked about in one of our previous uh, videos, and you can check it out as well. Generally, sauna use is associated with many health benefits like reduction in cardiovascular disease mortality, reduction in blood pressure, reduction in Alzheimer's. And uh, when it comes to longevity overall, taking a sauna four or more times a week is associated with 40% reduction in all cause mortality. Yeah, 65% re reduction in the risk of Alzheimer's. But this is also applies to doing once a week. <laughs> so if you, you know, any any amount of sauna is uh, generally healthy, and it's going to improve your health and longevity, in my opinion, but the best and the biggest reductions come when you do it uh, four or more times a week. If you do it zero times, then that's probably not <laughs> very good. And uh, at least once is I mean, better than nothing, but optimally four times a week. And habit number three, the last one is going to be time restricted eating or, you know, restricting your calories in some shape or form. And there is no like, like direct evidence to suggest that this form of intermittent fasting would extend lifespan yet because it's a relatively new concept. There is um, some links between this any form of time restricted eating with uh, improvements in like uh, the biomarkers linked to cardiovascular disease, hypertension, or just overall, um, you know, aging as well. So time restricted eating can improve many aspects of your health and longevity, like reduction in blood pressure, better insulin sensitivity and uh, blood sugar regulation. And when it comes to weight loss, then regular calorie restriction, obviously, is pretty much the same in terms of like, you, you can't, <laughs> like, uh, get away with eating unlimited amount of calories if you're doing time restricted eating. Uh, but it does have like, you know, similar effects in a lot of ways. And calorie restriction is by far the like only like actual real ways we know that does extend uh, lifespan. But time restricted eating can have many aspects or positive effects on the health span and just overall metabolic health in the long term. Which one do you think is uh, better if, if you were only to do one time restricted eating or calorie restriction? 
Well, I personally would, you know, let's say for the average person who doesn't know anything about food or health, then if you just tell them, okay, eat only within these hours, like skip breakfast or eat it a bit later and eat early dinner, I think just by doing that, they would see an improvement in their health and longevity because they're not going to count their calories and they're not going to like really care that much about what they eat. But if you, you know, just tell them this, then uh, if they didn't change anything else, then they probably would see some improvements in their health. Like they would lose some weight because the time restrictment gives them this, uh, let's say, restriction and confinement. Um, and just by doing that, they would see an improvement in their health and longevity. Uh, but from if you control all the variables, then obviously calorie restriction is still more important. Like if you are in a like metabolic ward and you, you control all the calories, then... Um, I think that uh, calorie restriction is like mo the more important factor in regulating the longevity. But if you combine, you know, you eat the same amount of calories, but one of the, let's say, options is to do it also in a smaller time frame slightly, then in that case, I think it's better than just calorie restriction without mm. time restricted eating. Because they're in, like in some mice studies, they do find that uh, doing calorie restriction plus doing it in a smaller time frame extends lifespan significantly more than just calorie restriction so in that in that study they did just calorie restriction extended the lifespan of mice by 10 percent but time time restricted eating plus the same calorie restriction extended their life by 35 percent so like three times longer than just calorie restriction so i think that yeah like the you know circadian component and time restricted eating can provide like some unique effects because they're like when you are in a longer period of fasting then you are mimicking calorie restriction even more and you probably like activate these different longevity pathways a, a bit more than with regular calorie restriction. But uh, yeah, like calorie restriction is the bigger lever, the more important factor than time restricted eating. All right, that's it for these three habits. If you want to know about the other three habits that we talked about in Inca's channel, then uh, check out the video in the description. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. And I'm Inka. Stay optimized, stay empowered.